In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top-ranked fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, uh, we answered fitness and health questions that were asked by people who listen to the show or who watch the show on YouTube. But the way we opened the episode is with an introductory portion. Today's introductory portion was 40 minutes long. We talked about studies and we told some stories. After that, we answered the questions. By the way, if you want to fast forward to your favorite part, just go to mindpumppodcast.com. Everything is time-stamped. All right, here's the breakdown. We start out by talking about Adam's bachelor pad yeah. uh, from back in the day and how he likes the AC set so cold that he's broken it five times. Uh, that led us to talking about the chili pad. The chili pad is something that goes on your bed. It's water-cooled, um, and it cools your bed down or warms it up. There's two sides to it, so you and your spouse can have different temperatures, and uh, it makes a huge difference. Sleep really like a champion. improves your sleep quality. And because you listen to Mind Pump, you get a discount. Here's what you do if you want to check them out. Go to chilitechnology.com. That's C-H-I-L-I technology.com forward slash mind pump. There's a code on the page that'll give you between 15 to 25% off uh, their products. Then we talked about STDs and the aging population. Uh, Justin's an expert on that. Then we talked about the debates last (laughs) night uh, and how boring they were. Uh, I talked about the noise my son makes when he plays video games. Uh, Adam said, uh, gave us a good suggestion. He said we should play Brain FM to drown it out. By the way, Brain FM plays songs and music that changes your brain state. This stuff is legit. There are uh, things you can listen to to improve your focus, um, help you sleep better, help you meditate. It's very, very creepy how effective it's it is. It's powerful. No joke. Um, and you get 20% off because you listen to Mind Pump. Just go to brain.fm forward slash Mind Pump. Try them out. Then I talked about my workout. been having great workouts lately. Uh, I talked about a study on resistance training. The study highlighted all the things that are most effective for building muscle. We talked about streaming farms and how that's affecting Spotify. Uh, We talked about Magic Spoon, one of our sponsors. They make high-protein, low-sugar cereal, no artificial sweeteners. Gluten-free. Gluten-free and grain-free, and they are one of our sponsors. Go to magicspoon.com forward slash mind pump, and you'll get a discount. Then I talked about the coronavirus and how it spreads differently than the flu virus. And I talked about a study showing how being exposed to other coronaviruses that cause a common cold may reduce symptoms from COVID-19. Then we got into answering the questions. The first one, this person wants to know the benefit of the barbell push press and are there other momentum-based exercises for other body parts that are great? Next question, this person wants to know how sore is too sore when you train your muscles? The next question, this person wants to know how you should train and eat if you are a female who has lost their period? And the final question, This person wants to know, if you work out in the morning, should you eat breakfast or should you eat breakfast after the workout? Also, uh, this month, we took two of our most popular workout programs, MAPS Anabolic, which is a full-body resistance training program designed to build muscle, build strength, speed up the metabolism to make fat loss easier, and we combined it with the No BS six-pack formula, which is a core training program only. It's a program designed to build defined ab and oblique muscles. Both those programs combined normally is $174, but this month we're taking both programs and you only pay one payment, $59.95. That's $59.95. You get lifetime access access to both programs. They've never been combined and never has the price been this low. Here's how you get access. Go to mapsoctober.com. That's M A P S. October.com. By the way, both programs come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you can sign up, use the programs for a full month. If you're not happy, return them, and you'll get all your money back. No questions asked. Guaranteed. You were talking about how um, you know the, the current the, the debates is like two old men just get pissed oh, off like grumpy old men. Yes. Yeah. Just like that movie, Grumpy Old Men. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Such a classic. What a great movie. Who are they fighting over in that, that in Grumpy uh, Old Men? That, that's um, one chick. She's super famous. Sophia Doug, Loren? I know. Yes, Sophia Loren. You're Doug, right. Doug definitely had was. a bikini poster of her in his room at Sophia one point. Sophia Loren? Yeah. <laughs> oh, everybody did. For <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I think I, I think hot. we're a little. Young, a, I think we're a little young, Sal. She's an her. Italian treasure. Yeah, <laughs> I'm serious. That was like a that's like a big deal back in the day. Did you have posters? Uh, you have she's posters a fox. No, dude. I didn't have no posters of Sophia. Did you guys? Now, were you were you guys allowed to have posters like that in your room of girls? Yeah, uh, I did not. I, I don't know that I wasn't allowed. I just you know I didn't want my mom coming in and you know I don't know. 
I guess when I was at home, it was a little weird. You know what it was for I'm me? Alone on this one because my cousin had yeah. a he had a Kathy Ireland uh, po- uh, was it calendar? I, I hid all that stuff. He yeah. had a calendar exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I thought to myself how stupid my cousin was. Cause I'm like. You're an idiot. Now your mom knows you jerk off. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I thought it was a secret. Your mom knows. You know what I mean? I thought I to, nobody knows. You know what I mean? No. She uh, keeps your sheets. I remember I went to work with my dad once and we were like working or whatever. My dad made a comment like, yeah, you, you, it's because you're jerking off in the bathroom. All, you know, because you're working with workers and that's the kind of joke. That's you know? all they talk about. And man. I remember being like, oh my gosh. Yeah. How did they know? Is that not, it's that that's not a thing with kids anymore, right? Do you like, do your boys want posters or do either one of your kids? Why have- would they put up a poster? Have you been online ever? Well, bro, that's still. A, what do you mean? It's decorating your room. Yeah. Why is that not? That's not, not really a thing. I. I mean, kind of like. A, I mean, I put like, I put Star Wars stuff up for them. You yeah. know, just to kind of indoctrinate them. But <laughs> yeah, no, it wasn't really their idea. Yeah. Adam. I, so, Adam had calendars and stuff. In his oh, house I totally did. Up until he was like thirty. <laughs> not that late, dude. Not that late. I know. Hold I, on a second. Like Twenty five. He had bro. the ultimate bachelor. Bro, if you had Playboy magazines. You told me the stories. I had no. On a rotating tables. bed. I didn't just have that. Ceiling. I had like the whole like I had, like not only did I subscribe to the magazine and have it you know and this is totally like for the articles yeah. Yeah, for the zebra sheets. which by the way let me tell you some of the best interviews are in the in playboy magazine yeah yeah no so I, I heard i had like the I never soap dispensers the towels like the the whole place was done like that what do you mean soap dispensers you can dude have you ever not gone to playboy.com like playboy before? oh wait a minute ones? you can buy all like ex- house accessory stuff that's that is all playboy hold on a second yeah they were did play- you walk around in a robe super, super, they yeah, were playboy yeah, yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, it was over the top. Now a over girl coming over your house, there's no doubt what's ha- you know. What I mean, it's like she kind of knows what's the deal. Yeah. Like if she shows up at your house and she's like, "Okay," I'm you know, I really didn't think of it like that. She's not thinking like he's a nice guy. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know. Like right? you know, no one ever called it out, right? Like, yeah. I, which is weird. But I, I didn't think of it like that. I think what it really was was I he's grew like up. Quagmire. I grew up yeah. <laughs> from Family Guy. From. <laughs> giggity, giggity. Yeah. It was right. Like no, no. It was. I think you know. You. I grew up in a very conservative home. Uh, that uh, my parents were very strict. I wasn't allowed to do any of that stuff. And I had my house by the time I was 21 years old. So at 21, you're still kind of a baby, bro. Yeah, you're making 21 yeah, you year old ideas. Yeah, and I yeah, and I true. and at that time in my life, I'm, I'm making pretty good money where I'm at. You're, like, were you thinking like, oh, girls will love this? It wasn't. No, it wasn't like that. It was more like I can do yeah. this. This is my yeah, house. Nobody can tell me no. Yeah, I couldn't have dirty magazines when I was growing up, so I'm gonna have dirty magazines as an adult. You know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna have it on my <laughs> coffee table because I can because it's my fucking house, yeah, right? Yeah. So it was totally that, you know. And it took, you know, it, I don't know, it took a good five years to grow out of that, you know. <laughs> So <laughs> <laughs> that's the funniest. Uh, Did you never have like great. family visit? Or I kids didn't give a over? shit. That was like that was it. That was like the, that was the play, right? It was just like I. It's my house now. You're in my house. Like when you're when I was a kid and I was in their house. It's like I had to live by their rules. Now you're in my house. These are my rules. That's what happens. Playboys stay out on the coffee table. That's yeah. what happens when you sell that too hard to your kids. Uh, when know, you have right? your own house, you make your own rules. No, okay? exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what happens. It, I mean, I I heard that over and over. So of course, as soon as you get and I think. People that probably wait years and years, like until they're closer to thirty, and they get a house, they're probably a lot more mature, and they've grown past all those bullshit. But when you're a a kid at you know seventeen years old, living at home, hearing that, and then three years later, I'm in my own place. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm still working that shit out. You know, I'm still dealing with all that that childhood insecurity. That's bullshit. why you had the AC on all the time. Yeah. <laughs> ice cream like crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I grown out of the ice cream in the Playboy, but I have not grown out of the AC. It's the AC, still blowing all the time. Oh yeah, no, it's still a thing. We had it, so the guy came, we. <laughs> I think we've burnt up the AC thing like fucking five times in like the last few years. And the guy came uh, the other day. We were I don't know where I was at, but Katrina was home, and he's like, you know, uh, he I, he's, the, he's like a tech guy, right? And he uh, 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 what are they HVAC guy, right? And he's from uh, Merced area, and he's like, you know, you guys are you guys keep this AC just way too low. You know, it's way too way what too. What is it set at? Uh, sixty sixty seven. That's not. Yeah, it's not that that's old. I mean, well, it's cold, but not do the same. But. No, that's the compromise. Right? If it was up to me, it'd be sixty four, right? So I want sixty four. Oh. Com- the compromise is sixty seven. You want to see your brand? Katrina, like so sixty five. Well, it's, Katrina wants seventy. I want sixty four. Sixty seven is where we land. Mm. So, anyways, my point is that he tells her 
that oh well, we keep it at seventy five at my house and it's real comfortable and try and she she just laughed at him. She said, "Yeah, right. <laughs> you don't live with my husband then because see, there's no way you would go for seventy five. Trying to sell me on seventy five? <laughs> yeah, like, slap him. In like, the face. That's all. I was like, yeah. get the. We live in the Bay get Area for. Out of here. We live in the Bay Area for a reason, guy. Wait, hold on a second. Did did, did a Katrina make the appointment? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, she slipped. Yeah, him I like this. She guy. slipped him a twenty. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Hey, tell, tell him we have to keep it at seventy five. Yeah, yeah. Does she now when you guys use the chili pad? Does she put hers on warm and then yours on cold? Or does she still cool her side off? No, she does not cool her side off at all. So, so she'll, she'll leave hers alone completely, uh, and then like I'll I'll run mine. Have you used it to warm your bed up? At she all? has. I don't ever see. I don't even in the winter time. I still like it cold. Mm. She will warm the sheets up though if it's in really really cold. If it's cold winter time, and I'm not I'm not running the heater or something. Because I'm obviously the opposite, mm-hmm. right? So when winter comes around, I'd rather just sit by a fire, and then when we go to bed, it's cold. See your breath in the room, you dude. Know? So, dude, speaking of old uh, old man or whatever, you just made me rem- remember a memory. You know, I used to train a lot of people in advanced age, and at one point, I had maybe five clients who were in their 70s or 80s who stayed in those like uh, older living communities or whatever, mm-hmm. and they would tell me all the stuff that's going on in these places. So I didn't know this. This is now I looked this up. This is a true thing. Did you guys know the, the one of the fastest growing rate of STDs mm-hmm. in, in populations are older population? Did you guys yeah. know this? Yeah. No. The you, ST- you knew that? I did know that. Yes. You, you fucking around with a whole lot of old chicks or what? No. I just How do you know, know that? I, I know that because it's it. I, there was some article yeah, explain about that. yourself, please. Yeah, no, it's it's that I don't know. I guess it's not common knowledge, but yeah, that was one of those things. I I ran across that and was like, oh, that's interesting. And, and it's because of like uh, Viagra and yes. all these introductions of yeah, all these different ways now so, that they can keep. it Okay, up. so it's not it's no it's not the most prominent in that age group. It's just it's it's growing at a faster rate it's, than before. It's it's exploding. In oh, fact, wow. these, well, I mean, what like, percentage wise? Because before it was like, like one percent before, now it's like twelve percent. So that's bro. Exploding. No, they. Literally now have they've had uh, people come and talk to the groups to old people. <laughs> yes, it's like sex. Got to practice sex, sex ed for like seventy year olds. Yeah, like, <laughs> you got to because remember these people came from a different generation where you don't really use a condom unless you were a sailor, you know, at different ports or whatever. <laughs> at least that's what that's what some of my clients. I know them. that's hilarious. And so they used to because STD STDs would all of a sudden just just go rampant. Like all of a sudden there'd be like ten cases. Of gonorrhea or whatever. Yeah. And here's the other part of this. Nana's got the clap. Yeah. Here's here's the other part of this. <laughs> Gross, dude. Is that so it's Viagra because now all of a sudden, you know, homeboy can can do it. But the other part of it is that the if you're like a man, if you're an old man and you live in these homes, you are the man. Because especially if your set your shit works still. Because yeah. Yeah. those uh, hips aren't broken. At, at that age, once you get into like the eighties or whatever, it's mostly women. Like dudes usually die. So when you go in these homes, yeah. And they would tell me, like there was this one guy. So I trained these three women that all were from the same uh, you know, living place or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they would talk about this one dude. Ricardo. And I remember one <laughs> <laughs> just a picture of him. There. Yeah. Yeah. He's got like the comb over. <laughs> no, he's got, hey, ladies. I, I picture like a fedora, dude. It's like yeah. a fedora and some fucking They're doing like ballroom dancing, you know, and he's just way too good. You don't you don't have to do anything. I talked to him about and I remember talking to these ladies and I was like, because we had this Christmas party, so they all showed up at the same time. I'm like, why do you guys all talk about the same dude? They're like, there's two guys in the whole place. Didn't they make? A, yeah. Wasn't there a comedy show after this? And I, I want to say Morgan Freeman and so and like uh, one or two at, uh, were in it. There was there was a there was a comedy show. I, God damn it, I can't think of the name of it. There's a there's a movie that not a show a movie that was based on exactly this. Mm. And they're like a new guy comes in. I can't remember what who it is. Like so, there's one guy who's like the guy of the the retirement home. All the ladies love him, and then in comes like another old guy. Competition. Yeah, and then I think they have a, a friendly oh, rivalry at, at the beginning, and then they end up being friends. Come on, Doug, oh, you don't know this movie? The, the, no, <laughs> I have not seen it. <laughs> Doug, uh, Doug, you don't watch the movie of your peers? Yeah. <laughs> no, and, and probably they, Bruce Willis. I mean, they you would know, par- they, they would party, dude. They would party with this guy. Like take showers with him and that's oh yeah t- uh, tonight i'm gonna take a shower with stones so i'm like i can't believe you guys are telling me this <laughs> this is terrible yeah you know yes so, totally using the yes. loofah rose. that's it right there Dad. what's it called oh it's tommy lee jones is the other old guy just getting started yes it looks like a terrible movie no no it was funny it's uh, and that's what the, that's the premise of the of the of the movie is exactly what you're explaining right now it's uh, like yeah. the old guy at the We're retirement home limbo. that's got all the ladies and stuff like that and then in comes the other dude oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. there's hope, you know. <laughs> so. That's so, your life. That's your yeah. that's your goal in life. You just gotta live. <laughs> to live long enough to be like the guy. Yeah, I gotta live long enough so my kids put me in one of those homes. So I can- <laughs> 
<laughs> so last night I watched the uh, VP debate. Okay, so this is. Uh, did, did you stay awake? Yeah, yeah. I did. I, wa I watched the I watched whole thing. Ten minutes. Just okay, like you. so I watched the whole thing. This is the f the first time in my life. I have ever watched the presidential debate from beginning to end and watched the VP debate from beginning to end. And I used to get people used to give me shit all the time about it, right? Like that I don't care about what's going on in my country. To, yeah. And after watching both these, this is what I have to say to all those people. Fuck off. Yeah. Like yeah. you get nothing out of it. You get nothing. Zero. They, uh, no one ever, and nobody, even last night, I thought that Pence and Kamala both, uh, Handled themselves uh, professionally, and you know. Well, the contrast from Trump and Biden was yeah. a whole nother. Right, right. That so, must have been the feedback. Like it was really well like, cordial, right? It was yeah, they, they even they even complimented each yeah, other exactly. a couple times in there. So like totally respectful, but it's still no one answered a question. No, no. they don't do that. Nobody answers a question. That's they politics. have they have preloaded shit that they know that they want to say that stirs everybody up. That's which right. I'm very familiar with all those points are. Yeah. And so I feel like we get nowhere. And the biggest thing that I don't like about these debates this year is that it, it's so much of it is about COVID. And it's like, it's You're all, not scientists. Yeah. And not only that, it's, it's what ifs. Yeah. You know, what if you, you would have done this, we would have done that, then this could have happened and that could have, it's like all, all these things that you, nobody can prove. You know what though, dude, here again, again, this is just like when people get mad at the fact that they're you know, at the grocery store and the tabloid has Kim Kardashian on it and why are we all, re why do they make this? Because people buy it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know why they're talking about COVID all the time? Yeah. Because it works. That's how people are going to vote. Why they're not yeah. answering questions? Because it works. Yeah. That's a, If we voted differently, believe me, they would talk differently. They'd have to, mm -hmm. but they don't because that's what works. Yeah, so, the, the best question was literally the eighth grader who asked the la very last question. The pro of course. Yeah. That's, it's, and that was other than, and even then, like, I felt that was the closest, like, real answer that, or that was un, that wasn't loaded already. All the rest of them, I, the question gets asked, and I'm like, oh, okay, this will be good. I can't wait to hear what he has to say mm -hmm. or what she has to say. It's like, er, completely uh, take a left. You're a political virgin. Oh, uh, I remember God. feeling like that the That's first time. So yeah, annoying. but you know what? That it, 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 just, it, it, it just reminds me of why I don't watch the bullshit. Yeah. It's like you're not getting if – you if you watch that stuff and you really think that you're getting to know – what all these what all these politicians are gonna do in office? Get the get out of oh, here with yeah. that! No, I, I, I thought it was funny. I mean, I only watched a little piece. I don't know if this this happened the entire way through, but I would listen to Kamala, and then I would listen to Pence, and then they would make their points. And then Pence had a really slow delivery, and so he's like kind of getting through his point, and would get this the 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 lady that was uh, yeah, you know. Time. She would just hammer him, yeah. and I'm like, "This is hilarious!" Like he's like so slow and composed, like, but it's just like, "Stop! Your time is done." Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, "What?" Yeah. yeah. Can you please answer yeah. why you passed the 1994 <clears throat> crime bill? You know what? I would love to answer that. That's a very important question. I'm glad you said that. But first, I'd like to say yeah. something else. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it's exactly. And you never get the answer. Never get it. No, it's... and you wouldn't even get the full finish of that, right? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> could you could you imagine if real life was like that? How frustrating that would be. <laughs> if you're talking to your wife, honey, why didn't you buy the burger? Actually, I'm glad you asked that question it's uh, yeah. a good question i was but first, on my I, way to do that but, but here's for, what happened first yeah first i'd like to say though that american people really are you know they work hard and, and at the end of it you're like what the hell just <laughs> what's going on here uh, yeah no, i'm in the twilight it, zone it's just verbal diarrhea did you guys ever watch uh oh, what's it called uh what was that old cartoon doug i know we always go to doug but it's something old <laughs> uh johnny something uh he, he's got the dad's the adventure cartoon oh uh, that's um <sighs> Jet, not Johnny you know, Blaze. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, you know what I'm no, talking about. No, he had the race car and everything in it. Uh, it's uh, uh, he, he, they, it, it was like a 1960s adventure cartoon. Remember, Jet. I had no TV. Johnny Blaze, Johnny. Hanna Barbera. No, uh, right. Dude. I know who you're. Going. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna remember it because Pence looked exactly like the dad. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, it's a yeah. Johnny something. It's an old cartoon from the 1960s. It's an Did adventure. Did he have an eye patch? Uh, no. Oh, okay. No, I, one of the characters did. One. You and your pirates lately, too. I, I'm, a big, I'm big on pirates. <laughs> yeah, big on pirates, big on seniors. Uh, <laughs> what's going on? I don't know what's happening. <laughs> senior, <laughs> senior pirates. Senior pirates. Yeah. I'm going to make a new movie. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll figure it out. Dude, I got to have I gotta have a talk with my boy uh, tonight. You know how I told you guys we moved him in the garage because so he makes too much noise? Oh, uh, poor oh guy. Has he just completely owned the well, space now? Well, so what? here's the thing, okay? So we had a combination of two things. One, Jessica's not sleeping well at all and so when you're not sleeping well you hear everything 
So that's part of it. Oh, Johnny Quest. Yes. Oh, Johnny Quest. What yes. a great. My look, okay, God. look at his. Look I at his. Not remember that. Look at the dude. That's not his dad. That's the other guy. Look at him. That's freaking Pence, dude. It is. That's a cartoon character. Because well, he's got white hair. But he looks exactly like him. Yeah. Anyway, so she's not sleeping well, so she hears everything. And then on top of it, my son just gets loud and excited. So he's all the way in the garage. And last night, you could, I mean, I could barely hear him, but you could hear him. And if you're not sleeping, you're going to hear all that, right? Yeah. So he's in the garage. Just, ah, 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 you know? So I'm like, oh, my, what am I going to do now? <laughs> you know? And he's just like, he doesn't, you know, so if I tell him and he doesn't what do it. What time is this at? This was uh, I let him I let him play till about ten thirty eleven and we, we go to bed usually at nine by nine thirty we're in bed because we wake up pretty early uh-huh. so it's like ten thirty and he's bah, yeah ah, you gotta get it bah. you can hear him like you know yelling at his, <laughs> at his buddy <laughs> ah noobs yeah so yeah. I gotta have that conversation is the garage that close to your guys's bedroom it's uh you know how my place is there's that little I know, like, trying to patio pitch. area like yeah. thing and then the garage right there yeah I would think that's enough yes, distance. you get a buffer I know I would think that's enough distance. you can hear it a little bit I mean to be yeah. fair it's not not like super whatever, but yeah, yeah. If it bothers, why you. don't so why don't so why don't you and and Jessica have like a like Brain FM or something like that going on in the in the bedroom? Like, wouldn't you sleep? Wouldn't you sleep with white noise? <sighs> I, we like it quiet. Oh, we like it totally quiet. Oh yeah. wow! You know when I do Brain FM when I need to take like a nap or when I'm on a plane. Yeah, that's when I use it. Yeah, I usually do it when I'm around a lot of noise. Yeah, it's, because it's great. For, it's great. Yeah, exactly. It's great for noise cancellation. Yeah, that's what it's. Sure. That's what it's wonderful for. Yeah. I mean, that's so when you have something just like that, it's perfect. You'd much rather hear like waves crashing than some you know teenage boys. Yeah, screaming. that's a good. That's a good yeah. question. Maybe we should try that anyway. Even if you did this right, so even if it's not in your room. Out. You, so this is what I do with the dogs, right? It's you just got to make the white noise between her and him. Mm. So if you put the, even the white noise out in the kitchen or living room area and just let it play lightly, it'll be enough to drown out what he's doing in there. So she'll hear waves crashing or whatever like thing you mm. want, uh, whatever you know white noise thing that you want that Brain FM has. Yeah. Yeah. She'll subtly hear that, and hopefully and yeah. that's more <laughs> relaxing. <laughs> well, yeah, no, no, that's not. That is <laughs> no, not. Sleep that. That's, that's good, not sleep mode, bro. That's good lip sync music. Focus. <laughs> Let me tell yes, you, it it's is. It's PR yeah. material. You get a good squeeze whenever you do that. <laughs> yeah. I've been doing the uh, alternate. Um, you know how in Map Split and Phase One, the there's like you know you do you hit everybody part twice a week, right? But the second workout of the week, you're doing alternating. Uh, exercises or alternating limbs. Yeah. Oh, so right. like you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. so workout one for chest might be like a barbell incline press, and then the second time around that week, you're doing an incline dumbbell press, but you're alternating mm-hmm. with the dumbbells. You know, it's great. Sometimes it's such a good, even if you're advanced or you know what you're doing. Like I, I, you know, I wrote these programs with you guys. I know what I'm doing. I've trained lots of people, but sometimes I don't do things unless it's part of a program and it's written in there. And I'm saying I'm going to follow it. Yeah. Because I typically don't do that consistently with alternating, like alternate. You know, like a dumbbell row where one arm goes up and then the other one rows and then I switch off or a press or whatever. A lot of value in that. Oh, I love stabilizing with the other arm. Like you, you get even more effect from that. I, that, yeah, alternating is one of those things I've incorporated to myself as of late uh, with kettlebells, especially uh, kettlebell overhead press. Well, just from a bodybuilding perspective, the pump is intense, Yeah, especially if you alternate uh, at the squeeze. That's what I try to do. So I'll, I'll hold the dumbbell up at the top. And- just like literally three workouts ago, I did you know stability ball alternating chest press. I love that, mm. and I and then you and you stabilize when you're at the top. So you're I'm having to stabilize a dumbbell so my chest is staying contracted the entire time. That's why you're coming down on the opposite and you're alternating. I love doing stuff like that. I think it belongs in everybody's routine. It does. Maybe it's not the main focus if you're like more focused on strength gaining or bodybuilding, but it belongs in there. You know, mm-hmm. it definitely belong intermittently. And what I feel really like when I did the wakeboard wakeboarding last weekend. <clears throat> Waterboarding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Can I just that so meme? That was so. Hey, that meme was so good. <laughs> yeah. Whoever's hey, there's some di- of the best line. It you should have. be there's, called waterboarding. There, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> shout out to the two page. There's two pages. I don't know who runs these pages, so I can't shout out the actual yeah, person. They're, they're trying to stay anonymous, yeah. but so. they uh, I lo- they're doing a really good job of the memes because they stay current with the show and uh, they make me laugh. You know what I'm saying? Because I forget we talk all the freaking time, and sometimes I forget yeah. what we talked about. 
but I'll get on Instagram now and I'll, they obviously tag us, right? So it'll come up and I'm like, oh, that's right. I forgot Sal yeah, said oh, that. Oh, that was a great one. Yeah, the last one. Yeah. I like the one where we're on the couch and we're like, we're watching, like <laughs> yeah, snuggling. What the yeah, fuck? And Adam's all like <laughs> on my leg. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like a, a little midget, dude. Come on. <laughs> you got me hella tiny. Hey, you can't kid. say that anymore. Yeah. You can't say that anymore. Yeah, it's, not, it's not appropriate. Yeah. Hey, have you guys ever, speaking of physio balls, you ever, ever seen one explode underneath someone? No. Uh, yeah, one time. I actually. saw one. Yeah, a big guy just was, was sitting on it and exploded Dude, and fell on his back. I felt so bad because it was an obese woman. Mm. And phys- by the way, for listeners, physio balls, if they're good, they don't explode. I mean, you could you could put a lot of weight on those. You could, I mean, they're not going to explode. They're very very strong. Mm-hmm. But sometimes if they're old or they have a like they're a dried out a, yeah. or a slash in the sun or something, yeah. something right. And we had one in the aerobic studio, so one of the gyms I manage. And there was this woman I had just signed up for a membership, very very big woman, and she's in there and she goes to sit on a physio ball and it blows up Kaboom. and it's hella loud. Wow. And you, I, I felt so bad. I walked uh, over to her. I'm like, hey, you know, oh, yeah. it, don't worry. It's Mortifying. not. It's not you. You know, it was this tall. <laughs> oh, that, that was a terrible. <laughs> I was reading an article this today, and I, I want to hear what you guys think. About, like, uh, um, you know, Jeff Bezos, right? He got his, his uh, divorce what this last year, and his his wife now is worth uh, sixty forty or sixty billion dollars. Mm. Sixty billion. And I was what I was doing. I was doing the math on. She that. married well. Yeah, you you can do right. I know there's a bunch of people. She earned that, you know, for sure, right? So there, she could spend a million dollars a day, pretty much the rest of her life, and never run out of her money. That's, how crazy is that? That's so much. I can't even imagine that. You know how hard it would be to spend a million dollars a day? Mm, yeah, that's insane. Is that a challenge? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. What would you do? Uh, you uh, I you think, couldn't. Mm. Yeah, at that point, I don't think I don't think it's even fun to spend money anymore. Yeah, at that at that point, I think you you you, you don't, bought everything. Yeah, you've already bought everything you want. I think it's just like setting up your you know your your great 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 grandchildren. You yeah. shield everybody from our own government. Yeah. yeah, this is why people get upset though. They'll see that and be like, "That's not fair," you know, whatever. But you know, they don't realize is that money that's either in investments or even in the bank. It, it, it provides liquidity for the market and investment for other companies. So it still is playing a role. It's not the same as having sixty billion cash dollars and hiding them, you know, un, you know, underground or something like that. In which case, it yeah. is not doing. Yeah, is that all wrapped up in Amazon, like in in the? Stock? Yeah, she has four percent of Amazon, right? So she's not necessarily walking around with sixty billion dollars in her bank account. I don't right. think. Dude, yeah. but, but I mean, I think you can. I'm sure she can sell that percentage off mm-hmm. anytime she wants. Speaking sure. of companies, I wonder how that one company that makes the Regeneron, that's the drug that right. that Trump was like. I touting. said that was going to go crazy before he did that video, dude. dude I want to see what the stock he was is doing pumping on that. them hard. Yeah. yeah. Who, who well, we looked that? at we looked at it. We looked at it yesterday because I had seen an article on it before. Before he did that that whole talk, and you looked it up, and it was already on the rise. So I don't know, I don't remember what the ticker was, but we were we were talking about is it. Regeneron the name of the company? I believe it is. Really? Well, Doug, do you remember we were talking stocks just the other day, and this was a stock that um, I said to look up. Sal looked it up and said it would had already. Oh, ju- Regeneron is the name of the it drug is. maker. So I'm gonna I'm gonna look up the ticker to see what the you know what the what's happening with the the co- the price. Well, it'll be interesting now. Oh wow. But- what? It's six hundred and two dollars, but is that was, up was, or down? No, it's way up. That was like it was like three hundred and no, something. Oh. No, I don't think so. I think we were looking at a different drug. Yeah, yeah, that's a pff, that's expensive. Oh, it's up nine percent today. Yeah, so it's that's up, always it's up. interesting to me because like whatever he sort of promotes, there's going to be like that high percentage of people that anything he says are going to do the opposite. You know, so you wonder if it's it, as a company when he mentions you, whether or not they're like stoked or they're like, ah, oh, bro, he's still get, he's <clears> still going to get massive pull. Yeah, yeah, no. If you're if the president mentions, you kidding me? Because you imagine, yeah, no, I know. I, I, you should saying, get all your fitness information yeah. from Mind Pump. We yeah. fucking explode. Come I don't on. want that. Kind of heat, dude. Yeah, he's just <laughs> no. It's just annoying. I'll take it if, if there's something like really valid and awesome, and and you know you want people to to uh, you know seek uh, you know look into it, and then he says it, you're like, oh no, because you know you're gonna be fighting people on this. Yeah, you know? that's a lot of heat, dude. I mean, I don't know. I'll I, ta- I, I I'll feel like it. his friend owns Regeneron. That's what I feel like. I feel like it's one of his old contacts. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. And you know what, though? He's like, hey, I'm he's, sick. I'm sure he's got a million of those. He's yeah. like, if you hook me up with a drug that's not FDA approved uh, right. and it works, don't worry about it. I'll mention you guys on Twitter. Yeah. You know so, what what do you, so, what? Sal, do you think, okay, we, we've been waiting all the way till October for this October surprise and from both from both parties. 
Uh, do you think that there, there's still something to come, or do you think that we've seen what right. the we've seen the best from both sides? Mm. So you mentioned that tweet that he just did. Like, uh, you want to talk about that? He declassified no? uh, all the the investigative information on the Russia, you know, which actually it's turning out to be a like a hoax, right? But mm. he's he's uh, declassifying all that, declassifying all the stuff on Hillary's emails. Apparently, this is what he said that. Obama was briefed that Hillary would be using um, this Russia collusion thing um, as a political, you know, tool mm -hmm. that it's fabricated and that that nobody said anything. They allowed it to happen, which would be, I mean, if that's true, that would be terrible. So we'll see what's declassified and what comes out of that. Um, COVID, you know, he got sick. That could yeah. be like a t an October surprise. I don't think we've we've seen what they're going to. What about I, the other side? I mean, it's mainly just the taxes and and you know, kind of coming out with that. His I think they're waiting taxes. It's okay. not time yet. Yeah, yeah, I was like, that's pretty weak. I think yeah. you know what you know. You know why the, the news cycle and people's opinions is so quick now to change. It's even faster now because of social media. Yeah, that you have to time it. Just right. Meanwhile, what happened to Ghislaine Maxwell? Yeah. Do I have to like be the only one that still is trying to no, pay attention? No one suicided her yet, huh? Yeah, it's still, you know, she's still hanging around. Yeah. Where is that? Where where are we with that? Uh, I don't know, but uh, the ex-Reddit CEO made some comment, some public comment about her and said that he was at a party with her and a lot of other very influential people. And he said, yeah, everybody knew that she provided underage girls for for sex and nobody seemed to care back then so that's a kind of a crazy statement coming from someone yeah you know what i mean yeah i you know if it's all true i don't know i'm not a huge proponent of the death penalty but in this case maybe yeah yeah you know what i mean uh, seriously yeah let's let's uh, throttle let's yeah. see what happens hey i read this uh i found this article that compiled tons and tons of studies on resistance training so he, this guy literally went through and found all the best studies with the best controls on resistance training and listed all the, 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 the most important muscle building factors as proven by studies. And I went on there to see what he had compiled. You know, what, what do the studies all say? Because I've read a lot of them, but I'd like to see when someone summarizes it. And it's everything uh, that we know to be true. Everything. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, all the rep ranges build muscle, so it's good to phase in and out of them. You probably frequency and volume are very important, especially frequency for for muscle growth. Um, rest periods are important, although it's probably good to cycle in and out of different. It's, I mean, everything that we talk about, this article went through and showed the evidence in the studies. I love seeing stuff. So like basically, that. everything that you're putting yeah. in the book, anyway. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. it doesn't really matter. Everything we talk about, nothing, yeah, nothing, so, nothing new. Yeah, it's no. just more ammunition, you know, to, yeah, to build yeah. up our case. Uh, did you guys see uh, Howard Stern uh, resigned? Oh yeah! Did you see that? No, I for didn't. like a hundred, hundred twenty, hundred twenty million a year, dude. What, who is he oh, with? Again? Serious, serious. Do they still make money? So, I know. Yeah, but here's the theory on that, right? And and I guess I mean, imagine serious being in this situation. Okay, obviously uh, Howard Stern is was the Joe Rogan before Joe Rogan, right? So he's got that kind of pool. You know that <clears throat> they paid him massive money to originally go over to Sirius. So you got to think that. You know, okay. If, if if you think he's on the level of Joe Rogan, which I think he absolutely is, he's got millions of people that are listening to him. I think there's millions of people that subscribe to Sirius just because of him. And the, the so basically, if 15, you lose him, right? It's fifteen to eighteen dollars a month for a subscription for Sirius. So think of him having what just one million people. One million people, that's $15 million a month times 12. That's well over $120 million a year. So like, you almost have to pay that guy as long as he has that much pool. Who do you think has a bigger reach today, mm -hmm. him or Rogan? I, I would think Rogan because of the yeah. because he's getting capturing more of the younger generation, but I don't know. I don't do, know. do 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 more older people still listen to talk radio? Well, I mean, yeah, that, I think that's the the factor really. It's that paid wall. I think that eliminates a lot of potential new listeners because it's like he might have like kept a, a big majority of his listenership, but uh, behind that paid wall, that's a tough jump for a lot of people to commit to. Yeah, yeah I'm surprised that Spotify didn't get involved in, in a bidding war for him. If his contract was uh, due up, and they paid him one twenty. Why not pay him? Maybe they did, and we don't know. Yeah, maybe. Why not offer him? That know? would make them a monster, right? Oh yeah, that's what I would think. Yeah. If they had those two titans, oh, that'd be crazy. But you hear they're they're in kind of deep water right now with uh, these what they're calling streaming farms. 
So this is really popular in the music uh, space right now. It's been popular for a while, and it's been like one of the biggest like controversies with musicians is like, you know, they they jump to the top of the charts, and a lot of that is all based off of streams now, right? Because we don't buy records. People don't go buy records or CDs yeah. or cassettes anymore. So it's all based off of streams. But you've got so many of these streaming farms that have got, you know, 10,000 phones that are all, and then they, oh. and then they just auto listen to all these. They set them up, set these accounts to, to auto- To make it look like it's- To make sure they look at it. And so that's a big hack for a lot of these these guys wow. and girls that release a song. They, yeah. they go to these streaming farms, they get them to download hundreds of thousands of downloads right away. So the numbers shoot. go up and then they can, yeah. So they inflate them like crazy. Wow. So, well, and it's the same thing sense. people do on social media when they, right, right. they yeah. get all of a sudden, all you know, 5,000 yeah, 5, followers. <laughs> right. But that's, it. I mean, they're losing millions. I think it was even billions of dollars uh, based off of that because that's how they base how they're going to pay yeah pay these artists that are on there so that's a big thing they're trying to to, to solve and that's figure out that's wild how crazy yeah yeah you, you got to think of that as if you're you know you're spotify you're one of these major companies that uh you know there's there's farms out there there's trolling farms out there you know if even if for instagram for facebook for yes. all these kind of tech companies i mean they have to like have somebody there accounting for uh, all these uh excess amount of, of numbers of people. Yeah, I feel like I feel like right now it's got a lot of power, but I feel like as people get more and more privy to it and used to social media, that that's going to kind of... How are they going to filter this? Yeah, because it has a lot of power right now. Well, I, it, it, makes, it reminds me of this. Like, think about it this way. Imagine how powerful the first TV commercials were when TV kind of... When they first came out, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, they were probably so effective and people probably thought to myself to themselves... Oh, this is true. You know, this commercial said that this product is the best. I believe it because I just saw it on TV. Yeah. Oh, right. And then it got to the point where, you know, you watch a TV commercial and you're like, okay, right. Yeah. I don't believe anything you guys say or whatever. But with social media, when you see comments and stuff, you tend to believe like, oh, this is what people are thinking, not realizing that there's a lot of these paid for bots and trolls. Yeah. I wonder if that's gonna change. You know what I mean? Yeah. The way like the way we view TV commercials change i wonder if that's going to change yeah i don't think it'll change that people will stop doing it i think it'll only get worse but i do think that like to your point that more people will, will it'll carry less weight yeah less people will well, this will is where i see it. facebook really shining because they have connections to your family your your intimate friends yes. and so it's like you know i i really feel like it's going to reduce down to people you like no. know yeah. and, and trust in and whatever they say and so they're going to like kind of prop them to right you know, that makes sense right yeah. so like you know instead of now looking at things where it's got you know like susie it, likes a, it a million oh. likes it'll be like you know 80 percent of your friends like this mm -hmm. right you know, or 20 percent of your friends don't like this like so that would be more valuable to me than coming across a page that's got a million likes or a million comments on it that, you know, all of them or half of them could all be coming from one of these mm -hmm. farms. Do you guys bots. get uh, emails from Magic Spoon? Like I, when I order, I get I get emails from them every now and then mm -hmm. and uh, I was opening it and they had um, – they had this cool thing where you could basically pick like four different boxes that you could make your own combo now instead of just getting, you know, that one combo that's always like the same four. Yeah. You can actually throw peanut butter in there. You can throw oh, uh, nice. a couple of the new flavors in there that uh, they didn't have before as an option. I was like, oh, yeah, that's, the, that's the custom uh, bundle. Oh, wow. Which, yeah. which is a great idea. Is blueberry still the jam? Is that the Dude, best one? Blueberry, still? I don't know, man. I, I like peanut butter is really good too. Like, I, I like peanut butter butter with the chocolate combo like I, I really wasn't like a fan of the chocolate but the combo of peanut butter and chocolate is great well when they did the when they reformulated the flavor i actually think that the the fruity flavor ended up being like yeah fruity actually did a fruity fruity blueberry. yeah fruity blueberry it, it, for me it's fruity blueberry and peanut butter like well that. it's and, it's also this a lot of people don't know this that uh it, you know okay high in protein no sugar right it's uh you know natural ingredients or whatever um, good quality proteins made with milk and whey protein. A lot of people don't know this, though. It's gluten-free and grain-free. Mm. So there are a lot of people who, because cereals are typically not gluten-free, yeah. and a high-protein cereal is typically not gluten-free. Well, that's a good point. I mean, that's the only reason why I can eat it. Right. So, I mean, I you know, if you have a dairy intolerance, okay, fine. You're probably not eating cereal anyway, but uh, otherwise, grain-free and gluten-free, too. So you get your high-protein, no gluten, no sugar, uh, natural ingredients, no artificial flavors, I mean, it's no wonder that. It's, no, I'm due to. They're, yeah, they're killing it's it. I'm due to re up right yeah. now. Hey, I read a, 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 a cool study on coronavirus. So there's a lot of interesting stuff that's coming out. First off, there was this huge article I read, 
explaining why or why coronavirus is so hard to predict in comparison to the flu. So the way that uh, viruses spread can be different from virus to virus. With the flu, you tend to have this kind of general transmission rate. Okay, so you can predict this many people get it and they're, they, they'll infect this many people. And so we can make charts and say it, we predict this many infections. The thing with the coronavirus that we're now learning that is really strange is that there's some people in situations that spread it like crazy. And then there's lots of situations where you don't spread it at all. In fact, I have a friend hmm. who had coronavirus and in the same house with his wife and kids, nobody else got it. Oh, interesting. Just he got it. Uh, Dr. Jolene Brighton, she got it. Nobody in her family got it. But then you have situations like there was this one woman who was at a church service, and they did the the, the distancing and everything, but out of that church service, something like 50-something people got infected, and they're called super spreaders. And you see this with some viruses. And so this, what's, this is what hmm. makes it so hard to calculate because – Averages don't work with that. For right. example, if, if you're trying to like if you wanted to figure out the average pay uh, of people in a in a restaurant, and then Jeff Bezos walks in, all of a sudden everybody's average pay is now you know two hundred million dollars yeah. because one guy yeah. is worth a trillion dollars, <laughs> right? Oh, so it's it's hard to figure that out. That's a good so point. They're trying to figure this out, and this is why contact tracing seems to be. Well, this is also why I hate this is the conversation in these debates because yeah. of all all this stuff. Is and they're still figuring it out. They haven't figured out anything. <laughs> yeah. I feel. Yeah, so it's like some people are super spreaders, and then there's most people aren't at all. That's interesting because yeah, really I crazy. I have a friend that got it, and she gave it to her husband, both kids, the whole family got it. Sure. So that's you know, which I would think that would be more common, but now I the, guess because the, the flu works that way typically, it's pretty consistent with how it spreads. We can kind of predict we see their you know models and we know what's going to happen yeah coronavirus is strange like in sweden for example they didn't shut anything down uh what they did is banned like gatherings of larger than 50 people and um schools were still open up to 16 years old i think after that then they they closed the schools down but they're largely open you go to restaurants now nobody's wearing masks everybody's whatever and they're it seems like they're beating uh, this whole thing. They're trying to figure out wh wh how does that work over there? Why is it some areas we see this crazy spread? Like in Italy, there's one town that like made up like 75% of all the cases mm. uh, of coronavirus. And it's because of this. Because some And so once they figure this out, I think it's going to help yeah, a lot. Yeah, what, 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 what makes up those super spreaders? Yeah, anyway, so here's a, a, another part of this article. Um, apparently there's studies showing that if you were exposed to other coronaviruses, because there's lots of different uh, coronaviruses, right? The, the one that we're talking about is COVID-19, but there's other ones that cause like the common cold. Mm -hmm. And they're finding in some of these studies that if you were exposed to other coronaviruses that cause the common cold, that the current COVID-19 virus is probably going to have a much lower mm. effect on you, which is good because- so you build up some antibodies Yeah, somewhat. so that's good news because that means that we, because the old uh, theory on you know herd immunity is we kind of based it off of how the flu works, but if it's mm. with COVID is different, then it may mean that we don't need to get nearly as many people Do you know what it. we've connected this with smoking, like people that smoke, like how much the higher risk they are? Because this is a respiratory thing, right? That's one of the reasons why it hits people so hard. It's, so Well, now they're saying it's a, it's a blood vessel thing. Oh. Yeah, that it's that it does affect the respiratory system, but it's through the blood vessels. But we're seeing uh, neurological issues and damage and issues with the nervous system. See, that's what I'm worried about is the neurological stuff that like later on, like five, ten years from now, you know, if there's any more uh, ramifications from that. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. But it is it is interesting. It's but, not yeah. like uh, other like flu. We know a lot about because every other pandemic we've had for the last hour, however many you know, hundred years or so were flu, uh, you know, pandemic. Was that meme that you shared? Was that a real picture of the, the, it would look like it was like some sort of an, you know, concert or orchestra and they were, they had like, they were playing the flutes and they had like masks with like the, yeah. that that's a real picture. Yeah. And there's like an opening so they could yeah. play the, the clarinet or whatever. That's yeah. a real picture. Yeah, dude. <laughs> that is the stupidest. Just, thing. Oh, I'm no. sorry, I can't. <laughs> I don't have any comment. Yeah, I know. It's getting so ridiculous. Uh, did you hear? Slap me in the face. Yeah, did you hear that uh, Gavin Newsom said he, he recommended that people put their masks on in between bites at a restaurant. <laughs> I want to vote that we don't mention that guy anymore. Yeah, <laughs> didn't we get a bad review because of that? Didn't we get somebody who's like a big Newsom fan? I yeah. love Newsom. You I didn't know there was. I didn't, know, I, didn't I didn't know, know that existed. He I does did, have nice yeah. hair and he is handsome. Uh, I will say he that he does have that going for yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> First question is from Andrew Woodruff, fifteen. 
The barbell push press uses momentum to allow more weight for the shoulders. What are some other muscle groups and exercises that really benefit from added momentum? Oh, that's kind of a cool question. Yeah, so it's not necessarily the momentum, um, although there are some momentum can provide some benefits, like helping you get past the sticking point in the well, lift. But really, some explosiveness. Yeah. That's yeah. where it's fast twitch. It's yeah. the speed. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's the speed that you're getting the benefit from. A push press is a faster press than a strict uh, shoulder press. Yeah. I will say this: nine out of ten times, you should do a strict press. Well, it's it, speed and load. Right, because you can move more weight, so you're moving more load, and it's speed. So those two things are the t- the two factors that you're you're are the two major benefits that you're getting. Yeah, but you could also get incredible value from speed with a light load if you're explosive enough. Olympic lifters do this all the time. Yeah. Um, what muscle That's groups true. can can get benefit from this? All muscle groups, but that doesn't mean you should apply this to all muscle groups. I think for some exercises it lends itself well, and other exercises. It doesn't lend itself very well, you know, like uh, if you're going to do like a overhead tricep extension, explosive, you know, momentum based tricep extension. I don't think the val- the benefit outweighs the risk uh, from doing that. And if your goal is just to build a good, strong, solid, you know, muscular physique, you could probably never do movements <laughs> like this. And again, I think, you know, explosive, fast movements. They have some value, but you need to to you need to have good stability. You need to have great form, good control, because the risk of injury goes yeah, up. Yeah, it exposes the cracks. Anytime you add acceleration into the mix and you haven't uh, worked on stabilizing and being able to uh, decelerate properly, then you know that's where you, you put yourself like at high risk. So it's it's more of a high risk thing, but you do get the rewards of the fast twitch response, and that's something that if you're not working on that at all, uh, you know that's a major benefit uh, that you know actually is going to produce some size. To to the muscle and some strength that you're not going to get just from, uh, you know, your, your slower cadence type uh, lifts. I, I see a lot of, I actually see a lot of benefit from it, especially for the advanced lifter, right? So I, I saw huge results uh, by doing that. I didn't really ever train power. It just was not a focus of mine. Now, when I was competing and having to see progress, right? It really challenged my my programming and diet more than I've ever challenged myself personally to to string, you know, several years of crazy consistency. I really had to pull every trick I had, like every everything that I knew I've learned over the last two decades in training, which caused me to do things like this. I would have never done a heavy push press uh, in the past. I just was, I'm not a power lifter. I didn't see a tremendous amount of value in it. To your point, Sal, you can get tons of gains with never ever really utilizing something like this. But when you're kind of pulling everything out and you've never trained this way, I, my shoulders blew up because of heavy, yeah. heavy push presses. Mm-hmm. I was not using, utilizing that going to that was great. Now that being said, it's, I think of it the same way teaching someone basketball or any other sport. And when if it's like teaching someone a spin move a you know behind the back pass can be very valuable if you have built an incredible game of of all the foundational moves and exercise and you can handle the ball really well there is going to become a time in the game where throwing a behind the back pass if you don't know how to do that really well can become very valuable or a, a crazy between the legs crossover type of deal right but if you can't lay the ball up well you can't dribble with both hands very well you can't pivot very well mm-hmm. you can't do all the basics very well training this way has it will hurt you more, just like it would yeah. in a game. If you can't do those fundamentals and you're trying to do fancy moves in a game, your ball's going to get stolen from you. You're going to get poked loose, and it's not, it's not going to benefit well, you very much. Also, and, and to your point of like, uh, there's not a lot of maybe barbell exercises. I mean, Olympic lifts, obviously, that's like something that uh, people know right away. Like this is about acceleration. This is about speed. It's about technique and form at its highest you know level. Uh, there are other alternatives. So this is where I really like the kettlebells and the kettlebell swings. Uh, and and that's because you're you're getting that snap and that power out of derived out of your hips, and so that's really where it's sent like it's center to everything. And even in your uh, push press, like you're you're getting that snap and power from that that hip hinge and that that really fast uh, powerful snap that you're going to get from the hips. And so uh, the the kettlebell swing addresses that beautifully. Uh, and it's it's pretty controlled and safe in terms of learning how uh, to utilize power in in your programming uh, as well as medicine balls. Medicine balls, I like things where you can take weight and you can get rid of it. And so you don't even have to worry about the de- deceleration 
uh, part of that movement. Yeah, bringing down a push press to your chest improperly, great way to hurt your shoulder or even hurt your your rib cage. I, I tell you what, if your mentality going into speed or momentum based exercises is all about being able to lift more weight, you're doing it wrong. Okay, so if you're just motivated, if you're doing curls and you're like, you know what, I'm curling the 30s, I want to curl the 45s, and so you get your you start to swing and get bad motion. Right. That's the wrong reason to to do these types of movements. Don't worry so much about the weight. Uh, use the appropriate amount of weight, which sometimes and oftentimes is more weight. But if it's just a way for you to lift more weight in the gym, you're using it wrong. Well, you have – I mean, the, the question is like what other – we didn't even address what other muscle groups. I really see lots of value in every other muscle group except for maybe your – Buys, tries, and calves. Yeah. You could do like a right? pen lay row yeah. for your yeah. back. You could do for uh, you know explosive push ups, chest pass to the wall. Yeah, you for know, that. Even bench press with speed. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Even if you got a, if you got good form and technique with the bench press, doing that with a light light load yeah, and explosive rotational tosses, mm -hmm. do all kinds of stuff. Next question is from Alabama Craftmaster. As far as overtraining goes, how sore is too sore? Usually, I'll give you a kind of a general answer. Usually, if you're sore for longer than a couple days, like two days, I would say more than that, you probably overdid it. If your soreness is impeding your performance in your next workout, you probably overdid it. If if it's sore to the touch, rather than like, I, I, it's okay to get sore to where you have to stretch the muscle. Yeah. Like if I worked on my chest yesterday, right, I, I don't notice it's sore unless I sit there and stretch it and I go, oh yeah, I feel a little bit of soreness. That's okay, but when it gets like sore to the touch, where every movement hurts, where it lasts for more than two days, you probably overdid it. Yeah, it's almost like uh, when you're really tight and restricted versus like it, you're aching like all day. Like it's just this constant sort of throbbing signal that you're you're sitting with, uh, which I, I've been to that level, and that's not something that uh, I'm like, oh wow, that was way too far. I way overreached, but like a little bit of tightness, I think it should be expected. I mean, it this is such a hard one to answer because the because of the individual variance, because so many people are, are it, if I'm talking to a client, for say, for example, I'm talking to a client who is completely, um, weightlifting is foreign to them. You know, like they're the type of person who, remember the first time you train these clients where they, they say, instead of saying sore, they're like, I hurt, you know, my yeah. bicep hurt. They think they hurt, they're hurt themselves. I think I'm injured. Right. Cause they don't, they're not familiar with feeling sore. You know, explaining them what soreness is and that it's okay and it's part of the process. That conversation sounds like that. Then I then you have someone on the other the other end of the spectrum who is like hardcore training all the time and they're chasing the soreness because they don't feel like they have accomplished a good workout unless they're really sore. Then I'm talking different to that person because that person more likely is in what like Sal always explains the what I like the recovery trap where your body is constantly sore. It's always trying to recover and it's never allowing it to adapt and grit stronger and build more muscle. So it is a fine line and fine dance. Myself personally, when I if I come out of the, uh, a workout and the next day I'm really sore to where it, it it I can feel it the way I move, whether it be in my chest or my legs. I'm walking differently or I'm moving differently because I am so sore. I overreached. I, the, I always look at that as like I did more than I needed to do. I could have done X amount uh, less sets. I could have worked out 10 minutes less and I could have been just as effective as far as my pursuit of building more muscle. So, And that is a constant conversation with myself. So it really depends on who I'm talking to. Are you the person who gravitates towards training to be sore, you probably need to back off and learn how to scale back on in your workouts. If you're someone who's just unfamiliar with being sore and you're like, oh my God, is this a bad thing? I heard Mind Pump says that I shouldn't be too sore and I actually feel really sore this next day. Like eh, getting that person kind of comfortable with being sore. So it's a really hard one to answer on a podcast when I'm not looking at the person or talking to or know their history uh, to where I can tell them like how sore they should or should not be. Next question is from Sarah Stone. How do you go about training and nutrition for women who are missing their period and are trying to get it back? Do you have to be more careful with those who have suffered eating disorders in the past? Be because due to the, the both questions, I'm going to assume that the reason why this person is missing their period is probably because they're too lean mm -hmm. and they're overtraining, over they're overworking. Now, there's lots of reasons why a woman could lose their period, um, and you know this is something that you'd want to work with a medical pro professional over. Now, in, in the fitness space, 
Oftentimes, we see this in women who are getting their bodies too lean. If you get too lean, your body uh, doesn't want to be fertile, so you'll lose your period. If you work out too hard, too often, the same thing will happen. Your body will start to not want to be fertile, um, and you'll lose your period. In those cases, increasing calories, not being too low in proteins, fats, or carbs, so you don't want to be low in any of them. You want to bump your calories. You want to focus on recovery uh, type movements. You want to get good sleep. And the type of exercise you should focus on is traditional strength training um, and be very careful of overworking. Yeah. And it can take time. If you do that uh, over time, you'll start to, you'll, you'll gain a little bit of body fat. You'll gain a little bit of muscle, a little bit of strength. Because you're eating extra calories, your body now feels like it's a good environment to be fertile. Um, and you'll start to see your period uh, come back. And and with the women that I've worked with in this situation, it works like clockwork. But it can take a while. It's taken as it's for some clients. You know, I remember one girl in particular. It took us about five months. It was five months of this, and she was somebody who had gone through extreme dieting over and over again. She did have a past of an eating disorder, but she was working with a therapist. And so when she came to see me, uh, me and her therapist together worked together, and I did put her on. A nutrition plan that had her bumping her calories slowly. So it's like a reverse diet. I had her eat more fats. In this particular case, she was eating too low of fat. And she only trained with me twice a week. We did two days a week, full mm-hmm. body workouts, um, four or five exercises in each workout. Mm-hmm. You know, these, these barbell movements like squats and deadlifts and overhead presses and you know, you know, one and a half to two minute rests in between sets. And after about five months of doing this, her period came back and she hadn't had it for a couple of years. Yeah. I think this is definitely a client that you have to be extra careful and a generic prescription would look very similar to what Sal said. I would have, I would say two to three times a week, three times being max the amount of times we're lifting. We're probably training at a 60 to 80% uh, intensity. So we're not going he- hella hard. I'm uh, eliminating any sort of cardio that she may be doing and we're going to do walking uh, instead of any sort of uh, intense cardio. The major focus is getting all the macronutrients, so not doing anything where we're eliminating a carb or eliminating protein or eliminating fats. We're doing a more balanced way of eating. My goal is to slowly increase her calories. Can I manipulate her training program, manipulate the, how much steps and movement she's doing to cancel out the increase in calories? But the ultimate goal is I'm trying to get this this lady to eat more food, uh, and a balanced meal plan, limit stress, focus on sleep. Uh, that's really what it looks like. And it, mm-hmm. it you know, to Sal's point, um, it could be something that turns around pretty quick. I've been able to take someone like this and literally turn it around in less than a month's time. And then I've also had some people that's taken six months to yeah. a year. So it just depends on how mu- how much they've been hammering their body for how long. Uh, for how long it takes to recover. Yeah. yeah, and it's hard too because it's, I mean, this is definitely a psychological uh, a, a barrier that, you know, you have to kind of really like gradually work your way through and lots of conversations in between to get them in the headspace that it's okay to do less, you, you know, and like it, a lot of times, I, like if, if it's a client like this, um, it's it tends to be sort of that that person that wants to do extra and wants to do a lot more cardio and wants to, uh, you know, make sure that, uh, you know, this, this body fat isn't going to come back no matter what. And, uh, and so it's just really trying to, to kind of bring them back to what's the most healthy approach for their body, getting strength back, you know, focusing more on the metrics of what we're doing in the gym, other attributes, you know, sleep, all these types of things. And then, you know, adjusting the nutrition accordingly and just slowly bumping those calories yeah. back. Up. Yeah. And sometimes you just got to gain body fat sometimes. I mean, sometimes you, you know, do. you're walking around at 15, 16% body oh, that's fat. That's a good point. As a female, sometimes it's like, okay, we got to get you in the, in the 20, right. in the 20% in range. range. Yeah. The low twenties, 20, 21, 22. Let's just get your body fat percentage up in a healthy way. And then poof, like magic, you know, they get their period back. Next question is from Lance Zach. For people working out in the mornings, is it better to eat breakfast before or after the workout? This is a really popular question. Yeah, you know, I, I don't. I work out every morning. I worked out this morning at uh, you five. Work out, you work out fasted though, right? Uh, yeah, 545. I was in the garage lifting weights. So I work out between five, 545 or 630 is when I'll start my morning workout. And I never eat before because if I did, I'd have to wake up, you know, I'd have to eat breakfast at 4 a.m. in order to work out at 545 and feel okay because I don't like to eat uh, to work out right after I eat. But here's the thing a lot of people forget. If you work out first thing in the morning, it's not like you've had no food ever. The food you had the day before, you're still storing some of that energy. Yeah. You know, if I had Especially a good, if you had a big dinner. Yeah, if I have a good dinner, I'm going to be okay in the morning. 
But there's a large, uh, there's a really, really big variance here between individuals. Um, mm. I, you know, I've worked with some clients that if they don't eat a couple hours before they work out, uh, they feel terrible. So they ha- no matter what time they work out, they have to have some food in their stomach, uh, you know, an hour and a half to two hours before they work out. Mm. Me personally, I'm okay. I'm perfectly fine uh, working. I'll work out fasted completely. I'll, I'll not eat at all and work out at noon. Uh, and be totally fine. Um, so it really does depend what makes you feel the best. The only challenge with having to eat breakfast before you work out, sometimes it means mm. that you would end up compromising your sleep because if you like me, like for example, if I work out at six, then that means I wake up at five to get where you, but if I want to eat breakfast, that means I'm going to work out, you know, wake up at four 30 or four 15. I don't think that's a good trade. I think sleep is more important than you know having the food before your workout. Well, the truth is you're not getting any value from that breakfast unless it is a minimum of an hour before that workout. Right. So it doesn't matter. Like so, why why have breakfast unless you can get it an hour more than an hour before? It takes that long. It takes that long for your body to digest it and then utilize it. So it's not even if you ate you know 30 minutes before a workout. You're not utilizing that fuel yet. That's yeah. still getting converted over into glucose. Your body is not using that for your fueling your workout. So you're still running off of last night's fuel anyway. Yeah. So unless you're getting up and more than an hour to eat before you do your workout, I would all, almost always recommend it to somebody to eat afterwards. Yeah, I wonder if it's more psychological than anything else. Like somebody who hasn't fasted before and just hasn't really understood like the signals of like, you know, having, how to navigate through that. They're just so used to have to having food before they do something. You know. It's like this conditioning, it's this programming that they've set their body up for where, you know, I have to have food before I do anything rigorous. Uh, but again, like, like th- there's variances and I'm sure there's people that don't do very well when they don't have food ahead of time. But I'm just wonder, I put that out there. If you've never fasted before, maybe this is the type of person who should, uh, you know, really introduce that. Well, not only that, it also matters like, okay, to like what Sal was saying, right? So most people, you're probably utilizing the fuel that you ate at dinner the night before. But, you know, if you do eat a very light dinner and you eat it at six o'clock or seven o'clock, there's a good chance that you've tapped into most of that. So your 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 fuel levels are lower. So, but then there's benefits of burning fat when you go to work out because of that. So there's benefits for you not feeling. But I could see like if you're somebody who's just you don't have the energy, you get lightheaded, or you have. If you're giving me that feedback as a client, then yeah, well, I'm gonna have you have. I'll probably have you do a liquid. Like I'll have you do a, a, a shake, I would have you do, because that your yes. body will break yeah. that down, digest that faster. And so if you're giving me feedback as a client that, man, Adam, I have to work out in the morning and I just- Your blood sugar drops. Right. I, I, I'm yeah lightheaded or I just, I can't get any energy to lift. And, and maybe that's because you're eating a 400 calorie or a 300 calorie dinner at six or seven. And so by the time five, six o'clock rolls around, you have tapped all that. You could have a glass of juice, you know, 30 minutes before. Yeah. That's what I used to do. I, I had clients that I would yeah. train at 7 a.m. and- They would, you know, there was a couple of them that would say that, like, oh, I get a little lightheaded. And so I'd tell them, hey, drink a glass of orange juice on the way here. And that solved it right there. It was really easy. Just, you know, an eight ounce glass of orange juice gave them what they needed to so that they weren't dizzy uh, during the workout. But uh, the huge individual variance here. But I I have found that the vast majority of people that I've worked with are perfectly fine. All the challenges and difficulty that they find with the morning workout did not have to do with the fact that they didn't eat. It had the fact it had to do with the fact that it was an early morning workout. Yeah. So yeah. it's like the, then just they would eat to get everything moving. Yeah, it's like then they'd eat and feel better, but why? Because now you're working out an hour later. So it's the, it's the morning part that usually causes the right. challenge. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come check us out on YouTube. Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Doug, the producer, at Mind Pump Doug. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Rarely ever, okay, did I have to tell clients of mine to take days off. Yeah. Most clients, uh, it was more about trying to keep them consistent and consistently coming in and staying consistent for months and years. Uh, that so the only time I, I think that it's really necessary.